Chris Union, uh, welcome to Bennett's Bike Social. Thanks very much for being with us today at the go-karting. Uh, first of all, you seem like you've had a good day. Just talk us through it. Do, have you walked away with a trophy first of the season No, yet? not even close. <laughs> this time last year, like when we, I won the, the afternoon one, it was mega. Always great when you go home with a trophy. To be fair, it was the only trophy I got all last year, to be fair. So. Um, but yeah, we, it was mixed up a bit this year. So last year it was like an individual event. This year it was, it was um, we had people like assigned to us. So it was like four man teams. It was pretty cool. I think I think it was better this year. Like we we were able to like integrate with the with everyone a bit more, and it was cool. So apart from the fact that I think we finished second last and third last in the races, but <laughs> it was mint fun. Yeah, good. Well, let's talk about 2023. Then let's look at it. Back on a Ducati for next year. Um, that must get your juices flowing after 2020 and 2021. That you're back on a machine that you know that you can that you're going to be competitive on. Yeah, I mean, you don't know you're going to be competitive on, but I've got obviously the knowledge that um, I was competitive on that bike. Um, it, not, nothing's ever a given, but um, yeah, at least I'm. At least I know I've performed on it. It's more or less the same bike. All the bikes are more or less the same bikes from two years ago. You know, there's there's no real sort of massive leaps forward that anyone's made. So, yeah, I'm I'm probably not necessarily looking forward to getting back on the Ducati. More looking forward to a sort of like fresh start. Last year was so hard in so many ways that, yeah, I'm just ready to sort of reset and go again. Could have been any manufacturer really that reset process, but it's it is probably easier given that it's back on a, a manufacturer that. I'd, for one, didn't expect to have been leaving when I did leave. And um, for two, knowing that I've had the really good results on it before and it obviously works with my style and that I can hopefully do the job that's required. Are you looking forward to going into a team where kind of all eyes are on you in, in, in such respect, in the superbike class anyway? Mm -hmm. are you, are you, is that something that you're relishing that, that kind of, it's going to sound a silly question, but everything kind of looks at you and revolves around you, that there's nobody on the other side of the garage for them to either focus on if they're doing better or whatever? I think it can work two ways. Um, <clears throat> I think it's, a, I'm pretty sure it's the first time in my like short circuit career that I've been in a, in a one rider team. It's quite rare. Mm. Um, most teams obviously run two. Um, so yeah, I'm, it'll be interesting because I don't know how that sort of dynamic works. You know, the first rule of racing is to beat your teammate because they're the only person on exactly the same machinery. Um, so that's kind of strange. Um, and obviously you haven't got that sort of secondary to bounce or sort of validate ideas off or even share a workload if you've got a really good relationship with another, with your teammate. So that's a detriment, um, but then you do have full focus on you, so you know that all that team is there for you, um, which also actually can potentially add to a pressure cooker situation, but I don't think that's the way that Motor Rapido works, so I'm not sort of, I don't think that's going to be the case. So yeah, I think it'll I think it'll work well. Obviously, we've got Ben Curry on the in the super sport class. So actually, I think that's a nice semi diversion of attention. So that will sort of keep full focus for superbike on the superbike on one rider. But then there's sort of a little bit of something else. Not that it's a little bit of something else, but I mean like for my side of the garage to sort of take the attention or to take that over focus because I think you can sometimes get over focused as well. <laughs> It's kind of, I suppose, it, it must feel a little bit like putting a pair of old slippers back on. But I know it's a new bike, really, for this year. How much are you going into it, kind of in the back of your head, knowing a kind of a base setting or a base ballpark of where you need to be straight away? <clears throat> yeah, that's an interesting one. I'm not... Um, for one, the first time when I rode the Ducati, it took me ages to understand how to get the most out of it. Literally, I was super slow relatively until um until the very first race of the year literally the lights went out and i i don't know what happened but i understood it something clicked thankfully at the start of the first race of the year you know it, it was really weird um so i'm hoping i don't need such a long process to get that click moment um how it's going to feel in terms of a pair of, of old slippers I, I think it is it's not really different but it is quite different and the team have been working on some really advanced and sophisticated stuff to do with en engine management obviously in BSB we've got no electronic aids it's not true that we don't have electronics every bike has electronics otherwise they don't run but we don't have any re reactive electronics so that means that 
the mapping of the bike is probably more important than it would be at, in any other championship. So the team have worked like really, really hard um, at, over the winter in getting sort of that something but pretty special dialed in. Might take a bit of time for them to sort of see that come to fruition and work, but I'm hoping for their sake that it works, and obviously for my sake. If it does, then I think we'll have a probably a better understanding of our bike than any other team will have of their, of their bike, which is will be pretty cool. You just mentioned there, like the the rules in BSB, obviously with the electronics side. Like obviously you have electronics. Yeah. Um, but with the B4R for this year, it, on paper it looked an absolute weapon, more than what it did before. So have you got a little bit of a not a doubt in the back of your mind, but thinking God, there's, there is a lot of power there that we need to manage. That's pretty much it. To be fair, I mean BSB now is nobody tunes a bike. People move the power where it needs to be. Um, there's very few circuits in the UK where you can use, I don't even know what power these bikes put out now, you know, it's far too much. For almost all of every circuit, you, we don't get given the power that that bike could give us. It's always been held back. So it's finding that fine line between not spinning, not wheeling, but the front has to always be just pouring the ground and creating as much grip as it can. Anything over or less than, is going to slow you down and that's that fine line that you're trying to make you and the team the rider's trying to find that point and the team's trying to make it easy for the rider to find that point with a good setup so yeah the 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 new ducati actually doesn't make a great deal of difference to bsb rules um yes there's some internal engine parts that i think might make it rev a little bit different but the power side of it is not something that's going to make a a tangible difference at, at British Championship. Um, the fairings are slightly different, but there's kind of a bit of leeway on the fairings anyway, so it's, it's here and there. So although it's very different as a road bike, um, actually once we get racing, it's, it's pretty much the same bike. Everything else is kind of different, obviously. It's the whole point of superbikes is that it's sort of derived from a, a standard bike, but the reality is, only the frames, the, the only standard bit. You just touched upon it there earlier, that last season was very strange, and I know you've touched upon it in the podcast as well, that you felt that all of it was there, all of the ingredients was there, it just wasn't mixed together correctly. Mm -hmm. How frustrating was that for you? Because, like you said before, everything was there. It, you, it's a proven package. It's won races before. You've been successful on it before as well. Just how frustrating was it for you walking away from last season thinking, where has is, where is it all kind of gone wrong? With the Suzuki? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, was, a, it, was, a, it was a weird one because obviously I was sort of left a bit high and dry really late. And then Hawk picked me up and I was like, mega. And I was actually really excited by the, the challenge because people sort of looked down a little bit up on... To be fair, they looked down a little bit on the Hawk setup and the Suzuki. So I was like, I think we can do something with this. And it's a really nice chassis. It's still a reasonably strong engine. Um, and when I rode it, I felt all those things. You know, it's a, it's a pretty compliant bike. It doesn't have any strengths, but it doesn't have any weaknesses. Other manufacturers has, have parts where they're super strong, but then they also have like real weak points. The Suzuki just didn't sort of do anything good or bad but that to me meant like it's it's a raceable bike um and it was just it was just a frustrating year it was just a it started out actually quite okay we were a little bit i wasn't quite ready for the start of the year i've got to admit i didn't feel like it was my motorbike going into round one which was silverstone and i was it was a little bit of a shame because silverstone had in the last two years been really good for the suzuki so i wish that round was a bit later but it wasn't so we went away from there with like some reasonable results, went to Donington again, got some pretty reasonable results and were making a step closer and closer towards the front. We were sort of getting to that point where we were about ready to fight for podiums and sort of that was going to be where we're at. Um, and then I made a silly mistake at Knock Hill on a sighting lap and injured my shoulder and it was just hard, hard, hard yards from there. Um, the recovery process or the injury was was greater than I sort of gave it credit for. I was lucky because we had a we had a break. If we hadn't have had that, then it would have been really bad. But we had a 
we had a break, but it still wasn't right when I came back. And then, yeah, I sort of came back and I was riding injured and also not quite, not quite on the pace of what I felt I should have. So then I was riding frustrated and then I was overriding. And then I was having these silly crashes that I'm not typically one to have. And it just sort of snowballed into this like, ah. Uh, and I knew we just had to try and hit the reset button somewhere. It sort of happened at SNET. We had a damp session, qualifying and qualified on pole. And it was like, oh, I mean, at least people know that we're still here. And then the first race was at SNET was, was actually a dry race. And I think we would have podiumed, but we, we had so many little, I wouldn't call them technicals, we had just so many little things. And in that race, the rear brake fell off behind the safety car. We had a safety car in the middle of the race and it just, it was just that little bit that hindered me. Then the next race, I had a, a complete failure of, of a part and had to pull in. And trust me, I don't normally pull in. And then the last race, I got knocked off by Leon Haslam at the, at the second corner. So I literally went from being like on pole and then nearly on the podium to then scoring zero points on the Sunday. And just like, that's just that smack back to earth I kept getting every time. Then like a few rounds rolled on went to Alton and I was racy again and we were like, oh good, we found a bit of a, found a bit of a sweet spot with the bike. I was getting back to fitness and then, yeah, just a freak accident, got knocked out, ruled out for Donington and then in all honesty, I shouldn't have come back at Brands, I was in no fit state. So the season was over, you know, it was just, it was bizarre and then it's mad, like I don't like wet sessions but I was quickest in every single session that we had wet tyres in the bike, but we didn't have a single wet race. You know, like, in a British championship, how do you not have a wet race? You know, it just... <laughs> I don't wish for wet races. I actually hate them, but we were quick in those conditions. <laughs> like, you didn't even get one wet race. You're like, oh, come on. You know, not like, even, give not, us something. <laughs> not even at Knock Hill. Yeah, yeah, not even, not <laughs> anything. You're like, oh. And yeah, so every time we were, it was damp or wet, it was quick. So we could do it. I just... Yeah, the season was just a frustrating one. It was frustrating for me and the team because we both really wanted to do a good job. Like, I think we both felt that we... I think we both felt that we deserved more. I've never had a season, and I've said it before, but I've never had a season where the effort and the potential is so misaligned with the results. You know, normally you get a ray of light and you get, you get to show at least something somewhere. But for me, I, it's funny, I don't know if I see this championship differently, but I spoke to quite a few people, and then, or when I do, they go, yeah, but you did good or whatever, and I'm, I can't remember where I did good, you know, like, I don't know what season I remember, but it wasn't, it wasn't a good season. Um, and yeah, it was, just, it was just one of them, so. <laughs> it didn't work out. Um, I wish it did, but, <laughs> but it didn't. Mm. And, and, and I'm not, I don't want to put the, the blame elsewhere because I do think that through all the things that went on, we didn't extract the most from the package. If I thought we'd extracted the most, then I would say, yes, there was limitations, X, Y, and Z. But until we reached that point, and I don't think we ever did, then I think there was more to come. It's not the best bike on the grid. It's not, you know, it's not, don't really need to debate that, but it's certainly... Not the worst. It's not the You could certainly win race on it. To win the championship would probably be difficult, but still a good bike. You, like you said kind of earlier that you've hit the reset button ahead of this year. Um, the championships hit the reset button as well. There's a new showdown format, yeah. shall we say. What are your thoughts on it? Because it seems to me, from my point of view, it's quite exciting. It brings the grid a little bit closer together. There's not really going to be one person kind of running away with it. Is that how you view it, or have you got a different thought on it? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I understand how, how it works. You know, this, the championship is a show, and if we don't keep the spectators entertained, then, then the show tails off, and then at some point the show doesn't happen. You know, if, so I totally get it. Um, I've never been a fan or not a fan. Um, I think I prefer this system to the previous one. I do think that like, if it's going to be the, the given that this is how it works, you should have the last round at different tracks or something because if the last round's always at the same track, it always favours our rider prefers it or our bike prefers it. Or even, to be fair, because it's so late in the championship, some riders go better in bad conditions, you know, like, so... Mm -hmm. 
in a way, it should be fair because it's the same for everyone, but it's always going to fall on Brands Hatch in October. So I kind of think that should be mixed up a bit, but yeah, as long as, as long as we don't start having like flipping Joker laps and fan boost and whatever else, then <laughs> do you know what I mean? As long as you don't start playing too much and sort of taking the race out of it, then I get it. I get that we have to basically give a product to the fans that is entertainment. And I think BSB does a good job of providing entertainment. And I think the new format's going to work out pretty well. They've obviously run the numbers. It's not just like picked out of thin air. They've run the numbers. They'll, they will have known over the last 10 years how that would have, how many riders can potentially win the championship in the last round. But to be fair, in the end, even the showdown, I don't think would have generated any different winners than a normal format, or maybe one in the last however many years it's been going. So more or less, the best rider is still going to win, or the guy with the most points, that's how it works, that's the championship. We all sign up for it at the beginning. We all know how the rules work. So it is what it is. You know, you, when you sign up to it, you can't sort of, you can't argue against it, can you? Mm, yeah. Finally then, I don't want to keep you too much longer because you've got a podcast to do and then you've got to get back up the road as well. Um, Other than you, because you're you're always going to say you, who do you think is going to be the 2023 Bennett's British Superbike Champion? Other than you. (laughs) Yeah, do you know what? It's such a hard question because there's so many. Like If I actually set off naming names, we'd we'd go through pretty much 80% of the grid. Um... Jason's always strong. Jason's going to be there. You know, that is without doubt. Um, obviously, we've lost some big hitters this year. You know, Taryn and Brad are away. Rory's away. Tom was not really very fast last year, but every now and again, he, he, well, he was super fast at Donington, but, you know, everywhere else he wasn't. But he was still a, a heavy hitter that's not in the mix. So we've lost four riders. Um, there's still a few to sort of, finalise their plans but yeah I think I think Jason's probably the he's always there I think PBM are going to be going to be good um, basically they've employed first and second in the championship from last year because mm-hmm. Brad's away That's so cool. they've they've just decided right we're going to get the best two that are, that are left over um, I actually think Andrew Irwin is going to be going to be strong but literally if you keep me sat here I'll I'll, I'll just go through the whole grid you know <laughs> That's, that's the way BSB works, and it's not until you sort of get into the nitty-gritty that you sort of go, okay, these are the... Because pretty much in, in British Championship, nearly everyone has the possibility to win on their day if, like, the stars align, all the bikes are really similar, all the riders are super talented. But there's almost always, a, like, a, a group that is pretty much always up there. And that's, that's the difference. It's keeping in that sort of top tier. Sort of, there's that old, like, old saying that you win your championship on your bad days. It's like staying, staying up there, you know. On the days you don't win, at least if you're fifth, sixth, you've got, you've got half a chance. So, yeah, you've got your main guys. and It's pretty cool, actually, this year. There's, it seems like there's not many coming into it because we've not had that, like, big name. But I think we've got every junior class British champion in, okay, not the lowest, not the smallest class, but you know, like mm-hmm. three or four British champions coming in. So I think that's mega. Um, those guys are obviously going to take a little bit of time to understand and adapt, but they're all super talented. So when they do, there's going to be some, some great racing. Well, Christian, thank you very much for your time and good luck in 2023. Cheers, man.